The name of today's video is Nomenclature Type 3. There are three types of binary compounds. We've already discussed binary ionic type 1 and 2. Today's main focus is binary molecular type 3. I want to stress here that these are made from two nonmetals. The nonmetals are on the right hand side of the staircase, and so both elements are going to come from this general region of the periodic table. Our first example is one that you've all heard of before, carbon dioxide. Learning from what we already know, it looks like they've used a, a prefix di to say that there's two oxygens, carbon dioxide. I want you to also notice that carbon and oxygen, back to the periodic table, carbon is here, oxygen's here. They're both nonmetals. So the, the system we're learning today, again, is type 3 molecular for two nonmetals. How do we name these type of compounds? Well, we use the Greek prefixes to name the number of each type of atom. Mono for one, di for two, tri for three, etc. We're going to use Greek prefixes. We're not concerned with ions or charges in this naming system, just naming each element and using a prefix to, to say how many of each we have. Um, as another example, this compound is commonly known as laughing gas but a chemist knows it as dinitrogen oxide. Di, meaning two nitrogens, oxide. We could use the prefix mono, but as you see here, it says not commonly used. So it could be called dinitrogen monoxide, but again, mono is usually only used with carbon monoxide, no other compounds. If you just say the name of the element, it's presumed there's one of them. Okay, our first try at this. CCL4 is a cleaning, a dry cleaning solvent. And what would it be called? Well, it would be called carbon. And now we have to name the four um, in with four chlorines. And the four is tetra, as you see here, T-E-T-R-A, and then it's chloride. I want to stress also, these are still binary compounds. They all still end in I-D-E. They have two elements. They all end in I-D-E. So this is the name of this dry cleaning solvent to chemists is called carbon tetrachloride. Let's try this one. Um, SO2 is a gas found when sulfur is burning. It, 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 you can smell it during the 4th of July. Uh, actually, in, when it's concentrated, it smells quite bad. And what would its name be? Well, sulfur and dye oxide. Sulfur dioxide is its name. SO2. Next. What's the formula for dihydrogen monoxide? Well, we have two hydrogens and an oxygen. Obviously, we call that more commonly water. There you go. H2O, dihydrogen monoxide. That's often a, que a trick question in uh, quizzes. Um, what's the formula for tetraphosphorus hexaoxide? Well, phosphorus is P, and we got four of them, and we got six oxygens. So it's P4, and O6. Once again, that's tetraphosphorus hexaoxide. It's pretty simple, isn't it? The hardest part is that you first recognize that it's a nonmetal nonmetal combination, so then you know to use the Greek prefixes. We never use Greek prefixes outside this naming system. Our last example is NI3. What's the name of NI3? Well, N is nitrogen, and 3 is tri, and iodide. So this becomes nitrogen triiodide. Uh, nitrogen triiodide is unique because it um, is very explosive and it will even be set off by the touch of a feather. And you can see in the picture to the right they are uh, touching it with a feather trying to get it to ignite. 
In conclusion, molecular compounds are made of two nonmetal elements. And we use the Greek prefixes to name these type of compounds, like carbon dioxide. And yes, you should become familiar with the Greek prefixes. At least one through five, um, or even one through six, are the ones that we most commonly use. Well, that's all for today.